Okay, now, my, my my people have been, we've been through a lot in life here. My sister comes up here to visit me and I'm glad to see her. She always come and tell me, show me a lot of love. I love my sister B, you understand? She, she's there for me and she's been asking me about how I've been treated. And my brother came and to me and say, Bruce, just be cool and don't, you know, create no problems. And then all of a sudden now, he has been caught up through the drugs. You know, it's like he was doing some, somebody put some phenol in his, in his situation and messed him up to the point where he they had to go and he had a, a bad heart already. Since they got his heart straightened out, he went back and started using again. And before it was over, he fell and hurt himself real bad. He hurt his shoulder where he can't walk. But now he's back up and trying to, you know, keep it, get it back together. He's got to go through the same. He told me to just go on in there and be cool. And at the time, I looked at him like, you know, what are you telling me this for? You know what I'm saying? And now it, it fell on him too. So now he's uh, in the same situation I'm in. I'm, I'm praying for him though. I, I thank God that God know that he's a good man also. He takes care of both of us. You know, I've been through, I've had some of the weirdest dreams since I've been here that I've ever had. I come from a powerful family, you know, I'm saying um, of the Macnesis. You know, you know, my uncle, my father's brother, he, he raised children and he, they came out with seven ministers out of the family. All of them were uh, uh, smart and good, did good in school. I've had, my, on my mother's side of the house, she had six, six sisters and they all were God-fearing people. We went to church and we had quartets and we sang in the choir and we did all the things that, you understand, that people bring you up in church to do. And I let drugs take me off into another direction. That's what did it to me. But I'm back away from that now and I'm not gonna let that take over me. You know, it's like uh, I'm through with that part of my life. I'm, I'm 72 years old now and it's time for me to wake up and smell the coffee and it's well it's been time a long time ago i'm glad and i'm just thankful that god cared enough to let me see what's going on really in my body in my life i, I came out and I, i'm not crippled i'm not hurt i had a, a such thing as they call temporary memory loss i lost i used to leave my keys in the car or leave my keys at the door once I open them. I forget that I opened them. So those girls were taking their toe on it. Let this be a lesson to anybody that's out there on them drugs thinking that they're getting away or something. It's wearing and tearing on you in a way that you'll never even expect, you know, but it's tearing away on your brain, you know, and it's making you forget a lot of things that's important for your life to sustain. You got to keep God in your life. You've got to. You've got to keep God in your life, number one. My parents didn't teach me about Jehovah. They taught me about God, which is good too, but I've learned since I've been here, my, son, my even my son came to me and told me, say, don't you get hooked up with those Jehovah Witnesses because they're gonna teach you wrong. But they're not, they're teaching me about what the, the word itself is teaching me about God. You know, what you should do right and, should, and, and what he's expecting out of you. You know, I love what where I'm at now with him. You know, I love the way that uh, things have come together for me. You know, I'm not being mistreated. I never thought I'd be in a nursing home this early, but I, I feel good that I am here. I'm glad to, to tell you the truth, 
that I am here. You know, I, I love, you know, being able to get up in the morning and eat a proper meal. And But I used to get up and use drugs every day. I did that. Women would come to me and use me as far as they needed a place to go where they could go and have, uh, you know, contact, sexual intercourse with a man and I would let them go for the, <clears throat> for the money because I wanted to have plenty of drugs and I kept a lot of drugs. People used to, I, I, I was hooked on pretty cars and a lot of money in my pocket. You know, now I'm satisfied with just having some money in my pocket, you know. I thank God for just easing my life and being able, I'm seeing everybody dropping them, dying like flies. And they, you know, it's now it's like the, my, my whole setup with the, with Leslie Bates, I would just go there and go there and eat and do all the singing in the choir and all that. I missed all that because I had to come here for a while now I'm in a shape where I can invite them here and do the same music praising God with that. You know, I can do that. I can praise the Lord with the same music that I was taught as a kid. Those songs that I used to, Jesus loved the little children. He, you know, he was teaching me then of where I needed to go with the, with, with, with the music. I've got some songs now that I did with Michael Green. Michael Green, he died. Bless his heart, and I loved him so much. We did a song called Pump My Brakes. I never will forget it. I it, It's on my heart like, a, like I'm reading it off a piece of paper. It says, I see death and illness surrounding me in each and every direction. And only God can give me peace and my needed protection. Now we know that everything we do in our daily lives is not always in God's will. So let's pray for each other and encourage one another. And then through his grace, we'll be healed. You understand? Uh, you know, uh, uh, Lord, if, 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 I'm, if I'm out of line, guide my steps the way you desire. Keep me in line for goodness sake. If I'm moving too fast and step out of line, Father, please help me and pump my brakes. So, you know, that's, that's the way the lyrics go to this song. And if y'all hear it on the radio, you're going to know it's your old boy, Bruce. You understand? I, they, they, I'm, I'm singing this to praise God because I'm asking him to steady guide me and give me strength to continue this. I'm, I'm thinking now, I'm in here with some people that's 100 years old and still are able to get up and, and function properly every day. So I'm thinking I may live to be 150 or 60 years old, you know? I know that sounds unusual nowadays because we dying at 31 and 36. Six because we're doing some stupid things. I'm out of that environment, and my plans are to stay out of that environment. You know, my my nephew went through something that I couldn't believe what happened to him. He had never did anything in his life to uh, against the law. He hadn't even got traffic tickets, and. He wound up in a fight with a guy over some money where he, my, my nephew and him pulled off a job and they, they, they got arrested for it and they got charged with bank robbery. He got away with the money, but when he got out, one of the guys that they owed the money to came to him and said, I want my money. They got to arguing, and he wound up killing this guy, you understand, over that, uh, the money that they had got out of the bank. They went into the bank as females, dressed as women, and got away. 
bless his heart, God was with him. You know, they did a good thing. They, they went to jail and they did their time. So it's all good, you know, but at the same time, they didn't kill nobody or do nothing like that, but they took something that didn't belong to them. But they got to fighting and they saw that my nephew was getting the worst part of the fight and he was losing. So they throw him a knife and he stabbed the guy that he was fighting and the guy died in the process. He got killed. My nephew went to jail and married a man while he was in there for his own protection to keep the rest of them off of it. You know, it was like uh, they was, uh, he was, he went in there already as kind of sweet and gay and everything, but when he got in there, they looked at him as he looked like a woman. And they started trying to come up on him like that. And so he went and got the baddest guy in the joint to protect him. And they, they, they wound up, understand, getting married. And they did that in there. And they know, you know, God didn't say two men supposed to get together or two women. You know, that's, that ain't the way he made it. But that's the way it ended up with the situation uh, for him. I was scared for him because I had been to the pen before him for food stamps myself. So I know what it's like in there. But I'm glad that he made it through without getting killed or, or nothing like that, you know. And, uh, I, uh, all my prayers go out to for him, to that he he'll make it through. And uh, it, it's 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 rough out there trying to keep up with the streets. So when he was coming to the stash house, he was coming there and for pleasure and get to have some peace. I never let anybody come in and cause them no problems. You know, uh, when they came, they came with. Uh, 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 whatever they needed, you go in here and nobody's going to bother you. And it was that kind of situation. I did that for the longest and would make a run and go make sure they were steady straight. It was so different to be out there like that, but I knew it was uh, the end of that was going to be death. But by coming here, I got a chance like God said, I'm going to put him in a clear situation where he can get away and breathe and take care of his, of, of whatever it is that's got him like that because it, it, it's, it's for nobody, you know. It's a, no, it's a no good situation, you know. And if anybody's out there watching this, let this be a lesson to you that this is not the way to go. Because it ain't no fun at the end of the race. Somebody's going to end up getting hurt or killed, robbed, stabbed, shot, or destroyed some kind of way. Or make you do something to somebody else. You know, first of all, you're living off of money that you're hustling to get. So you're doing wrong things to continue that traffic. You know, so... It's, it's no future in that. You know, the only future in the world right now is God. God looks down to us and he haven't forgot us. He created all this, you know. But, but my son actually thinks that if I talk to Jehovah Witnesses, I'll become a Jehovah Witness and go, they, it's, saying it's a spooky thing for me to to do because they saying what it did to Michael Jackson and what it did to this and that. No, I'm I'm not worried about that. I need to know God for myself. I need to know. He know me personally. When I get there, he's gonna know that this is Bruce that whom I've been through with. God know me just like I know a, another person. And I love that. God know me. He know me better than I know myself. You know, I've been a good influence for these people that I'm in here with, you know, to show them that, you know, the ones that don't have family, I'll be there for them. 
They need me to push them down the hall, or they need something, uh, some, some something to eat. I give them what I have because they are good people. They just done got to the age where now they need some help and some things are on their body that's going out. They have, you know, problems maybe walking or have problems remembering or have problems, you know, communicating. So I'm here to let them know that everything is going to be all right. Instead of put God in their life and talk to them about how great God is and what he's done. He's the creator of everything we have and how beautiful the land is if we don't kill each other. Now, we in here now, all races, Vietnamese, blacks, white, Chinese, Mexicans, all getting along, staying together, eating some foods that I've never even had before because I'm in another environment from where I used to just go and just get by with, didn't care about eating. I cared more about drugs than I, than I did, you know, about my health. Now, I'm more concerned about when I wake up in the morning, what we're going to eat. You know, that's a different feeling. God is good. I, that's all I can say to Jehovah. I thank you for waking me up every morning. I know you're the creator of all this. You understand? You brought your son here. They destroyed him. You know, your only begotten son was destroyed through this. You understand? But... God, you have you have sustained me through this enough to be able to be, to tell it. I was born from the parents of two people that believe in God so much till they made me go to church every day. I used to hate it, but I love it now. When they come here now, I can't stay out of the room when they come when they come to teach us. So tell them to show us something about the word. I haven't got enough of it in me now. And I try to encourage the rest of them to take God in as the Savior. Because he's real. I found that to be real. He is real. God is real. And he's beautiful. You know, he He created us. Even at night, I, when I walk outside and look outside at the stars and the clouds, and the sky, how pretty it is. I, all I can do is say, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. And at one point, I was just, uh, all I cared about was keeping some drugs in me. And it was poison in me, my brain, and, and everything else in me, till I got to the point where I started forgetting everything. Memory loss, they call it. You know, I see some of my people that I grew up around now, as some of them, a lot of them is dead. A lot of them didn't even make it to see it. A lot of them is brain dead, if not. They don't have no respect for each other. They rob everybody, they, they'll take from anybody, you know. You know, I was considered the, 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 they can call it trap house, but I was considered a place where it was a safe place for people to go and get high and use the drugs and stuff. I don't need that in my life anymore, you know. And uh, you know, but at the time, that's was the main thing on the subject was was about what did you have, how much drugs did you have, and how. Good. How many women were you gonna have sex with? And knew that wasn't right, but I'm so glad. I'm, just, you know, what I'm saying that, 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 that Jesus has opened my eyes. You know, you know what a friend we have in Jesus. Now all the time that I'm sitting here and in this place, those songs that was taught to me as a child, it's coming back. If one song was coming back and it said, I never will forget this. When I went to Marion, I was scared because I didn't know what to, I was gonna be facing. 
the situation, the name of the song is called Situation. The situation seems dim, Lord, but you brighten up my day. Those words came to me, when I trust in you, Lord, you always seem to make a way. You know, place me on the right path, Lord, and your words I shall obey. I'll do anything you tell me. Lord, I'll do anything you say. Through the good and bad times, you still show me love. And no matter where I've been, you understand, your love has always shined from, from above. I, 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 I can go to the pen, you be there. I go to the nursing home, you're there. God is always with us at all times. And I just thank you, Jehovah. I thank you for letting me learn your name to respect you. Do you remember in the Bible where it said, they said, how should we thank you? You know, uh, uh, in the Bible it said, uh, Jesus, show us how you pray. He said, our Father which art in heaven, hollow would be thy name. In other words, you know, put his name up front. But, you know, just Jehovah. Don't think that, okay, well, he didn't went in there and became Jehovah Witness. He is a Jehovah Witness, but he's Jehovah's, one of the people that learned to respect him for what he is, the creator of everything. Oh, my God. Yes. He's great. How great thou art. He is, he's deserving of all, everything that we give him. You know, I thank him. I thank you, Lord. You know, I thank you that you took the time out to come back and interview me. You know, the people that uh, come in and see me. You know what I'm saying? I thank, I thank this because I needed this. I needed this to show if there is a, 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 another end at this, it's some, it's some brightness at the end of this race. You know, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm disappointed that I, I lost it to the point where I, it took this to bring me here, but I'm here and it happened and I'm, I lived through it. So I thank God for that. I'm 72 years old now and I feel like I'm 30 something. You know, I don't, I'm not crippled. I'm not, you know, uh, uh, on no stick or no wheelchair or none of that. I just thank God that I'm still alive. I thank Lord, the Lord for that every day. And I go back now with my thoughts and see, have you ever heard of being raised by the tribe? That's the way I feel right now because of my mother's sisters and uncles and stuff and her brothers that I came up around, they raised me and kept me in church around, you know, church going people and God fearing people. And they put me in a situation where I had to praise the Lord and I'm so glad I did. You know, the, the, all the songs that I learned, I'm able to use them now because of the greatness of God. You know, it was a song I sung to them the other day while I'm in this nursing home. And it says, uh, there is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. With his arms wide open, he'll pardon you. Uh, because there is no secret what God will do. No matter what you've done, whether you've killed somebody or, or beat somebody out of some money or whatever the, your problem is, you can always take it to the, to the Lord in prayer. He's a forgiving God. And I want everybody to see that and know that he's forgiving. He's a good God. And I'm so proud of him the way that my life has went. You know, it's, you know, I didn't become a millionaire and sit around and say, I got all the money in the world, but I got God. And the reason that I love Bernice, my mother, 
The reason I love her so much, she didn't have much money to give me because she was poor. But she gave me Jesus. She gave me, she, she taught me about Jesus. And from that on, he took over. It's like whenever, let me tell you a, a little, a, a thing that I've, I've, I've seen it on Facebook. But it's the truth if I ever seen it. God told this man, he said, I'm going to send you down an angel. And I want this angel to take care of you. And uh, and he said, thank you for that, God. He said, but uh, how will I know who this angel is? He said, you just call him Mama. You'll call this, this angel Mama. But she going to teach you how to walk, how to talk, how to be polite, how to treat people. You're going to learn so much from this angel until, you know, as long as you know her name is Mama, that's the one that I thank God for that he sent down here for me, which was Bernice Churchill, which was my mother. She had six sisters, and all of them, she would go to their houses, and they praised the Lord. All of them cared about Jesus, you know, and my father was in the quartet. He sung with the the. the the blind boys. You know, I came up as a kid singing, you know, yes, Jesus loved me from the from a child. So now it's it's simple and it's easy for me to confess that God is good to me. You understand? I'm I'm just so glad for this interview that it, I'm not at the funeral and they having me in a box and talking about me right there, like, uh, you know, because I know when I die, I, I got somewhere to go. I'm going to the Lord. He know me. And, uh, you know, it, I, I suggest that everybody get to know him like that. You know, get a closer relationship, a closer walk with God, and your life will, will change all the way. You, 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 you learn not to mistreat people. You learn how to want some light. You'll learn how to treat your brother right. You know, treat them like you want to be treated. And that's the main thing. God is good. You know, he's real good. You know. In closing. In closing. We're going we're gonna to close this out. If there's anything you want to say in closing that you haven't said, just to end it right here, now's your time. Okay, now, I'm going to tell you what happened in here. I met some people that had never seen a black man before. And so they said, I just want to get to know you and see how y'all are. I told them, sexually, you don't want to know because once you go black, you won't go back, you know? <laughs> and that made them even, it made them even worse. They loved me to death. I wasn't trying to do anything harmful by, you know, doing no sex act or nothing with no child or with no, with no children in here, but no, with no uh, 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 elder person that can't help themselves. But we are consenting adults and they said it was all right as long as we do it in the privacy of our own room. And I respect that. You know, I respect that. But it made it look like, well, you know, you in a nursing home and you don't suppose to have sex. But that just shows you, you can have a relationship with anybody wherever you go at any age. Don't think because you're here that life is over. Because it's not. You know, they, they're, they're pay, paid to watch us and take care of us here. But at the same time, you spoke, you have privacy. You should be able to come in here and enjoy yourself. And it don't have to be no drugs involved. It just can be a big person caring about another person. That's what it's about right now, you know. What happened with the lady at the show? At the show? The one you said. Oh, okay. 
<laughs> I went to a friend's house. The bands that come here, they ask me would I go and play with them whenever they come. They want to come into the Elwoodsville area and play to these places. They impersonators of Elvis and they, they, they do music, but they like the way I blow my harmonica. So when I went to a friend's house the other day, this woman came rolling up in a wheelchair and I said, well, what did she want? <laughs> she said, I want to be with you. I said, be with me. What you got on your mind? She said, I'm going to show you something. And she rushed up to her face. I never will forget this. <laughs> she pulled out her glass eye out of her head and held it and told me to actually take my member and put it in her in her eye. And I say, what? She said, to do what I asked you. She did she did this a couple of times, the next thing I knew, I forgot about that she <laughs> that it was actually in a woman's face. I mean, you know, all I saw was her head doing doing this here. And I looked up, she had took my penis and put it in her eye. And sit there until until I reach an orgasm. <laughs> After I said to myself, I say, oh my God, she say, I'm glad we could, I could meet you, you know. I say, I'll be there. I done seen everything now. I, I, <laughs> when she did that, I wish, I wish you could have seen it. <laughs> you would never believe it, but she was, she worked it, and it was almost, I ain't going to say it was better than sex, but it was close. You know, it was so good. I hear him out there talk. Hey man, we thank you for uh, <laughs> sharing that with us. We thank you for checking in, man. And uh, I enjoyed that. Listen woman. to the to the next time. <laughs> we, we, we go we go see you in a minute, and we are glad you're doing okay, man. Thank I'm you. I'm glad to see y'all, and I'm glad y'all can see me. We appreciate you, man. Thank you. I'm glad to see y'all. Yes, sir.